So hello everyone. Uh, I have today with me Soumya. He's from West Bengal and uh, he also has received offer letter from Cranfield University in the branch of MSc in Advanced Engineering, Advanced Heat Engineering, right? So we know that Cranfield University is a British postgraduate public research university specializing in sciences, engineering, design, technology, and management. And uh, Curious thing is, it's a postgraduate institution, so they don't have any undergraduate program. And the university barely takes part in QS ranking, but I believe uh, in the last year, I believe they have taken the part in QS ranking and they stood uh, world, in the world ranking 53. All right, so, but we know that this university is prestigious and it offers a lot, lot, lot to a student. And uh, that's, that, that's what makes Cranfield's uh, Cranfield University incredible. So, hi Soumya, I hope you're doing good. Yeah, I have been doing quite good till now. And all right. first of all, I'd like to thank to the Europedia team for providing me the all right. opportunity. Sure. Over here. I'm thank you. Forward to it. All right. Yep. All right. So, why don't we start with your introduction? So, would you like to tell us more about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I passed my bachelor. in mechanical engineering from IEST Shippur on the year 2021 and mm -hmm. after that for the past one year I have been working in one of the manufacturing firm yeah so that's all about me all right so uh, do you mind if I ask you what was your CGPA in your bachelor's uh, well my CGPA was 8.67 on my bachelor's 8.67 so uh, I yeah. believe did you uh, you have completed your degree in, in with with honors right yeah first class with right. honors basically it was yeah and uh, basically how many projects you have done in your bachelor's uh actually in our college like uh, there were uh, uh, i have done few projects like uh, some mini projects and as well as uh, my final year projects and apart from that i have also did some research internships uh, in iit kanpur so there I have uh, worked with uh, CFD and mm -hmm. yeah, that's all about my so, so, background. Yeah. So basically uh, I have seen that uh, many students, they, they um, basically if you talk about the bachelor students, uh, they do minimum of uh, two internships. All right. So, yeah. so I believe uh, if you, if you, if you have two internships, then do you think that uh, your profile would be good to, uh, basically apply actually it depends like for my case uh, i have i did uh, one research internship and two industrial training i had previously but if someone is uh, like uh, applying for a uh, research oriented course like in future for masters then they should uh, focus more on research internships uh, rather than industrial training but if you are applying for industrial based course like in canfield like they mainly focus on like uh, industrial courses like uh, so then mm -hmm. you can actually go for industrial tra training or job experience can also help you or further yeah i, I believe so uh, but uh, what i observe is basically some some students think that uh, having a very high cgpa you know is is crucial what i believe is if you have a really good overall profile like in your case you have a good cgpa you have done quite a lot of projects you have done three internships so far and you also have a work experience so i believe your profile profile makes uh, makes a, a very uh, basically you know uh, an ideal case but what i have observed is if your cgpa is not good but if you have anything to compensate your cgpa all right so yeah I believe you you can you can still get into the dream university yeah obviously like i have seen some of the people who don't have a very good cgpa in fact a decent uh, academic background but they also got opportunity over there uh, some of my friends only have that and uh, like if you have a good cgpa that is always always good you will have some extra edge uh, but even if you don't have a, a, like a, uh, too much good academic background then also you can obviously get there uh, you have to build your skill 
that's what all of yes, us exactly. matters exactly all right so we know that you got an offer for uh, msc in advanced heat engineering so did yeah. you write ielts to uh, basically to get into this uh, university well uh, till now i have not written my ielts exam i will be writing uh, next month and hopefully right. i will get the required band so you received uh, basically a conditional offer letter yeah it's a conditional offer letter and if i uh, show the proper ielts band to them then i will get the uh, actual offer letter actually all right that's that's and makes sense like, uh, mm -hmm. and even like uh, in case like uh, this year i failed to get proper ielts band or in case uh, due to some visa re rejection i may not be able to mm -hmm. go this year then i will have the option next year also like to defer your uh, basically admission yeah, yeah. Right. so that's yep. a so, good backup yeah. option mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, uh, what what are the bands requirement uh, to study in uk well uh, it depends from uh, university to university like for mm -hmm. greenfield it is particularly 6.5 bands uh, you mm -hmm. need to have and if you apply for other university it can be 6 or if you apply if you are going for a uh, very good university then it can be seven as well so it depends yes it depends on the university for example yeah. most prestigious universities in 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 uk for example imperial oxford yeah. and cambridge they do have this requirement of seven plus band and they yeah. also have this requirement to fulfill the sectional cut off especially in the right writing section of your ielts exam yes, yes. Yeah. all right Yeah, so I believe six point five is pretty much uh, achievable, yeah. and uh, I, yeah, I yeah. wish you luck for your IELTS exam. All right, and uh, yeah. let's let's go further. And basically, uh, I'm 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 really curious to ask you how was the application process in Cranfield University, and basically which documents you have submitted. Uh, well, uh, for the application process, uh, you have to like fill the your academic. details at the starting then job experience then uh, you have to submit a proper sop like uh, after that uh, after sop you have to also submit ielts score that is uh, later on basically all right so the, if i have to sum yeah. your documents what you have submitted is your sop your cv your CV, yeah. lors i for forgot that all right yeah and letter of LOR recommendation was not required not actually. required uh, for my case mm -hmm. lor was not required now no. all right so you didn't submitted lor but you must yeah. have submitted your work experience certificate and your transcripts uh, no uh, not yet all i have right. not sub submitted work experience certificate yet uh, just i have written that i, uh, I did uh, i have i am having this many years of job experience like in months mm -hmm. whatever All right. So basically, you just mentioned your work experience on your CV. Yeah. All right. So this makes the application process really swift, right? If you have SOP, CV, and your transcripts, so you're good to apply to the Cranfield University. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So basically, I was going through your resume, and you have done a lot of quite work in the area of computational fluid dynamics, uh, but. you have chosen msc in advanced heat engineering so yes so so could you explain why you have shifted from cfd to advanced heat engineering or basically if you if you have found any similarities between these two fields yeah exactly like if you go through the course module of advanced heat engineering uh, there is actually a lot to do with cfds as well and there is a separate projects like once you will go there they, you will get the opportunity like uh, to go in depth uh in the cfd fields especially and i was particularly interested in that and also like uh, after completing my masters i have a plan of uh, going into the research and development sector uh so yeah like it's kind of inclined that's why i have uh, chosen this particular course all right that's that's really good uh, because you have done your research about yeah. this program and the university and your future prospect all right so that's that's really good now let's talk 
even more uh, something about even more important so uh, did you received any scholarship and have you applied to any external scholarship as well well uh, from the university i have received around uh, scholarship of 2000 pounds like uh, the course fee mm -hmm. is 22000 approximately around 22000 uh, pounds and uh, after that i have also applied for uh, one net zero scholarship and a few days ago i got to know that i have also got that scholarship i just have to write my ielts exam to receive that uh, so right. yeah so most of the scholarship uh, i'm talking about the third party scholarship like you have applied for net zero scholarship so usually they comes with terms and condition for example you have to come back to india and spend this much amount of year you cannot apply for for a stay there so if uh, you have as you have mentioned you have uh, received that net zero scholarship so did it yes. comes uh, comes with uh, any terms and condition uh, no like this uh, there is no terms and condition but i uh, like uh, there is a like you have to write basically like motivation like uh, why you want to go there so if uh, they finds it uh, proper then only they will uh, select you for that scholarship all right so, so basically there focus is on that point like uh, how much mm -hmm. after, after that yeah you know, uh, like mm -hmm. how many years you want to work after completing your MS in UK. So I believe that they focus on that point. All right. And uh, basically, how are you planning to, to manage your other finances? You have got the scholarship, but, they, but it is only partial. Yeah. Uh, like uh, it's around 50% I got scholarship. Uh, mm -hmm. For the rest, I am planning to take uh, some education loan uh, it's easily right. available like uh, it can be easily taken uh, mm -hmm. in private banks all right so again uh, last question um, sorry uh, basically i have a couple of more questions from you so why why did you choose to cranfield and did you did you apply to other universities in uk as well well actually i was not aware about that uh, this time Basically, Cranfield was uh, accepting via your grade score. Like they were giving much more preference to your grade score and SOP. So from one of my friends, I came to know about that. And after that, I have applied for Cranfield. And I have seen that Cranfield is a really good university, like one of the uh, best university in UK for particularly for postgraduates. And apart from that, uh, it has uh, got plenty of facilities like uh, cutting edge technologies also. So that's why basically I have chosen this university and also like for mechanical engineer, it is uh, stood among like uh, around QS, QS ranking of 27, I guess. So that's why also. Yes. I've chosen. All right. Yes. So as you mentioned, you, you have written the gate exam. So can I ask uh, how, how much gate score you got what was your uh, gate well, score i have given written i have written my gate exam on my fourth year and mm -hmm. i got around a decent score of around 560 marks 560 marks so it's right. not the not a very good score to mm -hmm. get into psus but yep. uh, yeah so so do you think if uh, a student has low gate score even then they think of applying to this such reputed university Yes, uh, actually, this reputed uh, university is mainly focus on your uh, SOPs. Uh, mm -hmm. Gate score is one extra advantage you can say. Like it's not that you have you need to have a very good gate score, then only you can get there. Uh, mm -hmm. They mainly focus on SOPs. You can say. Yes. So even even in Europedia, we we are firm believer that uh, your CGPA, GRE, IELTS. Uh, is basically just a filtering out criteria. So your yeah. ultimate admission depends on your statement of purpose, CV, and your letter of recommendations. In your case, yes. you didn't ha uh, basically have to provide them the recommendations, but still you have uh, written your SOP and you have drafted your CV as well. All right. Oh. So uh, thanks for confirming uh, what we believe in. All right. So yeah. again, uh, 
I would like to end this session with one one question. How did you find your PDA? Yeah, like uh, from the day one, like when I uh, uh, like when I planned to study at Cranfield University. From then onwards, I got a really good support from your PDA, uh, especially like. Uh, uh, throughout the application process then guiding them in each and every steps and after that they are also providing like IELTS classes as well so it's been yes. really great and yeah that's it uh, all right so thank you for those praiseworthy words and uh, yeah. uh, I wish you best of luck for the future uh, thanks for having this interaction Samia thank you thank you thank you very much